Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And we have a lot of crashes to go through just from January and February alone. Today we are looking at the Formula 4 United Arab Emirates Series as well as Formula Regional Middle East, the Toyota Racing Series slash Formula Regional Oceania Championship and of course the Asian Le Mans Series and the Bathurst 12 Hours. But we are starting with Formula 4 and these young kids all have something to prove as they begin their journeys and hopefully long careers in motor racing. What that tends to lead to is a lot of crashes, especially when you think there's 40 cars in this grid. 40 cars is clearly too many for some of these drivers and a lot of them get left behind and occasionally go in all directions, not necessarily on the track. Especially at the start of races, there tends to be a lot of chaos, as too many cars try to take over the same space as their rivals. Collisions are inevitable. What happened to this driver, I'm not entirely sure. But Zachary David isn't going any further. This happened on the straight. You just see three or four cars get alongside each other and there's just nowhere to go except into other cars and occasionally the Armco barrier. Uga Chugru and Tarpanen were two of the title contenders and here they are tangling together and this might be the reason neither of them won the title. Uga Chugru had dominated the early races, but didn't have much luck after this point. And that is just rude. Bustamante clearly trying to make her own way. And here's Teo Jensen clipping another driver destroying the back of his car and his Lindblad spinning. He almost took one of his competitors with him but they managed to escape. And here's Uga Chugru again although difficult to see through the fog just catches the back of another car and the title contenders hopes end on the straight at the start of the race. Here's from another angle it's very difficult to see where it happens but it's in the middle of the field and you can see it's not even that big a contact but it's enough to end his race. Fernando Barrichello is the son of Rubens Barrichello but Rubens rarely made mistakes like that. And here's Valentin Close making contact with another car and spinning himself out. And here's Teo Jensen again. Just loves getting involved in accidents. This is Balak Batty mixing it with a few of his competitors. That was quite a mess. And here's Teo Jensen again. He gets clipped. Another car jumps up behind him. And that's three races in a row at the same corner. There's Georgi Zorozivsky spinning on his own. Here's Fernando Barrichello again, this time tagging Ismail Ahmed. Flavio Olivieri was tagged by his teammate. Whilst Nicolo Lacourt did it on his own, just touching the barrier. Here's Nicolo Lacourt again, this time doing it with someone else. And as you can see, these races tend to descend into chaos. But this is Sebastian Murray just getting tagged by someone else. Now here's Tarpanen and Wharton. This was for the title. 
Tarpanen forces Wharton ride. And as Wharton gets back on the road, the pair of them just make contact. And that was the championship over. Wharton, despite only really having three wheels attached, was the champion. What a way to win it. Noah Lyle just spins on his own. At least he didn't take anyone else out with him. And here's Buster Monte again. Three cars into one corner. Always going to end up in a mess. And we end Formula 4 with Federico Riffi spinning and taking Hamda Alcabizi out as well. But now we move on to Formula Regional Middle East. A step up from Formula 4. But these drivers are just as capable of having big crashes as their younger counterparts. That was a big one for Sammy Megatunif. Gabriel Mini and Dino Bogonovic were two of the big names, but they came together here, and that was the end of Bogonovic's race. A marker board gets destroyed, and Brad Benavides spins with Matthias Zagazetta. And here's Taylor Barnard getting a nudge and then getting left behind. Now this was the big crash from Formula Regional Middle East. Once again, just too many cars going into the same corner at the same time. They were always going to run out of space. But in this one, as you can see, multiple cars going up in the air, hitting each other. And that was a red flag. Something like seven or eight cars were damaged in that one. Possibly more. If you watch on the left hand side, you'll see a car go up in the air. That could have been much worse. Luckily, everyone was okay. Here's Sebastian Montoya and Joshua Defec. Montoya gets sent out wide. And they make contact as he rejoins. And that was the end of his race. This corner again, and it caused a lot of problems for a lot of people. This time it's Michael Shin and Rafael Villa Gomez. And as we get to the next corner, even more cars get spat out the other side. And another one goes round. I believe that's Taylor Barnard and Raphael Kamara. Now, at this time, it's Dirksen getting spun at that corner. And he is very lucky that no one else clipped him. And now it's Aiden Neat's turn. Again, just four cars behind him, one tags him, and it's very easy to go around. Unfortunately for Aiden Neat, he gets caught by someone else as well. I think some modifications might need to be made to this corner. They seem to find it a little bit too difficult to go around it. This is the last corner of the track, and that's a spinner in the midfield. Once again, very lucky not to get tagged by anyone else. And this is Villa Gomez. Looking a bit airborne as well. And here's Niels Kulin doing it on the straight. This is supposed to be the easy part. It's the corners you want to worry about. Here's Nikita Bedrin making a desperate move on Aiden Neat, turning him around. Aiden Neat did not have much luck in this championship. He was tagged multiple times by multiple people. What do you do when you see a car in the middle of the track and you have nowhere to go? Well, if you're Daniel Manfiotulov, you hit the wall. Here's Aiden Neat again, and I mentioned that bad luck. That was entirely not his fault. 
These were your two title contenders, Andrea Kimi Antonelli and Taylor Barnard. And Kimi Antonelli just tags the back of his title rival, almost guaranteeing himself for championship. Whilst Owen Tongalovlu was not in contention, probably before the best. And here's Sammy Megatuniv. Same corner, same kind of incident. And here's Andrea Kimi Antonelli again, this time hitting Sebastian Montoya. Owen Tongavelu again, this time mixing it with Bora. They both end up in the wall, and there's another car spinning down the straight. This is Tim Tramlitz, the German, not having much luck, but ending up in the air. He manages to continue for a bit, but he would later retire. Here's Pepe Marti spinning round, Fluxer. I think they both continued. Solov ended in for Pruviak's race. And now we move on to the Toyota Racing Series or Formula Regional Oceania, whatever you want to call it. You'll see just off camera, Ryan Sheehan is about to have a big crash. A little wobble, and he's into the outside wall. Mostly caused by the marbles on the outside of the track. Let's see it from this angle. It just slides it in. Here's Liam Skeets having a very similar kind of accident. Brie Morris took her Tartus to places it was not designed to go. She would do this a lot over the course of the championship, but at least this time she made it to the racetrack. This is Josh Mason and Jacob Abel. I think Mason definitely came off worse out of that one. Those two were teammates, by the way. You probably couldn't tell. Here's Brianna Morris again. Doing a little bit more rallying. Callum Hedge was a title contender. He just drifts out wide, but at least he survives. Is he just coming into frame? There's David Morales getting spun by Tom McLennan. And Brianna Morris again. She has explored every blade of grass. Josh Mason had an interesting series. That's him tagging someone else this time. I think that's David Morales again. and sack the cameraman because he missed Billy Fraser going off. Although he manages to get it back on the track as well. I'm not entirely sure how Ryder Quinn ended up out there. Whilst Brandon Leach takes the Bree Morris line. I don't think it worked out for him either. Again, first corners are always tricky. Jacob Abel gets hit by Penrose and Bree Morris has nowhere to go. So those three cars just end up tangled up together. Brazilian Lucas Fekeri did not have a great time in the Formula Regional Oceania. And this is Josh Mason slamming into Ryan Sheehan. I think that's three strikes for Josh Mason. As always, the start is always very difficult in any race series. And it's actually hard to pick out what happened with that one. 
quite easy to pick out what happened here. Adam Fitzgerald went for a desperate move inside of Ryan Quinn, and both of them spun. But we will leave the single seaters behind with Austrian Charlie Wurtz, son of Alexander Wurtz, taking the win and the championship. He'll be moving on to Formula Regional European in the summer, and it's going to be very interesting watching his career. He's a very good driver. But now we move on to the Asian Le Mans series and a nice mix of prototypes and GT cars usually leads to things happening. And in the case of this unlucky competitor, it involves being spun out by a rival and left behind at the first corner. Not entirely sure what happened to Constantini, but he enters the frame backwards in his Ferrari. As I said, the GT cars and the prototypes mixing it together. Koigny this time left in the dust. It's even more difficult when it gets dark. Here's a lone spinner who's very lucky not to be collected. And again, it's these starts. Although this driver spins it on his own. Here's Charlie Cruz going for the lead and not getting it. This number 20 Porsche gets spun by the Lamborghini and left behind. Half an hour later, he'd be doing the same thing on his own. I think the sat nav might be broken in that Porsche. Another prototype spinning as it tries to get past the GD car, and his rival is very lucky to escape. One car trying to avoid another makes a mess of the marker boards and hits the wall, makes an even bigger mess of his own car. Speaking of messes, this is Douglas Koo in his Aston Martin. Sadly we missed the start of this one, but what's left isn't very much. You see the fluid gushing out of it. Now let's look at another start. There always seems to be something happening. Or a lot happening. I'm not sure how he was the one that spun. I hadn't picked him out of the crowd. And as the yellow flags come out, somehow more cars get into trouble. Look in the background, lots of smoke, and then cars spinning in all directions. And then a Mercedes appears out of nowhere. It's almost like a magic trick. Very unlucky to get tagged on that one. Very clean pirouette though. We have another spinner that we've missed to start. Although I presume the GT car and the prototype got together somehow. This was another big crash that we missed, and it's Johnny Lawson. His Ferrari is going to the scrapyard. Now here's Govan in the DKR engineering car. He may have spun, but they would win the championship. Unlike this car, who I'm not sure what actually happened to him. He just spun on his own. And that was ambitious. Possibly foolish. Kiffin Simpson was chasing the podium. But you don't get on it like this. I think that ended his ambitions. Is Liam Talbot's Mercedes trying to make a move, but getting it all wrong. This was a strange one. Belen Garcia spins, manages to get his opponent. The D station Aston Martin, he spun on his own, not taking anyone else out, which is much more polite. I believe that car got tagged by someone else. He may have been trying to come to the pits. 
Now this is Wyatt Brickercheck. It looks like there's something wrong with that wheel. In fact, there's definitely something wrong with that reel. Here's Jacobson and Hanley spinning in unison. I think there might have been contact, but I'm not entirely sure. And we'll leave this one spinning on his own and move away from the Asian Le Mans series and onto the Bathurst 12 hours. Where even in practice, it gets a bit tricky. This car went airborne, and you see from this angle how high it got. And this is Grant Donaldson. Just seemed to ignore the corner. And in the early hours of the morning, you can see Brendan Grove getting away with it. Only a little bit of contact. But as we see it from the outside angle, he almost got taken out. Christopher Haas, not so lucky. The back of that Audi is pretty much totaled. This is David Crampton taking out the polystyrene and hitting the wall. Tony Bates gets overtaken and then decides to take his ball and go home. We talked about Brandon Grove, but this is Stephen Grove. Entering the frame backwards in his Porsche and then finishing it off for good. Ross Pulakis got spun round. Whilst the Lamborghini of Adrian Dietz somehow winds up in frame on his own. And here's Dietz again, this time hitting the wall. Might have been caused by the first incident, although I'm not entirely sure. Kenny Habel in the very colourful Mercedes. Again, taking it where it's not supposed to go. It's just a little twitch. Sends him off course. And here's Adrian Dietz again. This will be for the last time. I think he definitely made a mess of that Lamborghini. Although Liquid Molly definitely got their money's worth of that sponsorship. There's two cars losing it down the hill. One of them is Aaron Cameron. Possibly that one. And here's Scotty Taylor making pretty much the same mistake. At least he can't see the accident happening now. This was for the race lead. Mara Engel making a bit of a desperate lunge on Gunon. It would not stop the Mercedes team from going on and winning the race. But Daniel Junkadella was definitely not winning the race. His Mercedes was getting both ends smashed in. And that's it for the Bathurst 12 hours. And, of course, this video too. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. I'll be back with a lot more motorsport content soon. And from the January and February 2023, I leave you with this snowy Nitro Rallycross scene. Thank you again, and have a good one.